Today, I'm heading to St. Augustine, Florida. Now, that's the nation's oldest city. I'm going to be visiting Ed and Jesse Gale Atkins. Now, their dining room may not be the country's oldest, but it sure is out of date. Now, besides looking after their three children while Ed's at work, Jesse Gale has developed a reputation for being a real do-it-yourselfer. She oversaw the addition of their home's den and has invited me to town to help her and Ed tackle their unfinished dining room. How are you? Oh, fine, thank Glad you. to have you here. So this is the uh, this dining is room, the dining huh? dining room. We use that term very loosely. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like the color. We don't like the floor. We don't like the light fixtures. It's dark. It's just very drab and okay. boring. Well, let's start with the floor. You've got concrete floor down here. Well, we've, we've had a nice uh, wavy avocado <laughs> carpet when we first moved in. I took okay. that up. We didn't have money to put down. So I just keep the lights low and I painted it and nobody ever knew. Well, Look, worked fine for a while. Yeah. And a few glasses of wine. It, nobody notices. Uh, what about the paint? Color. You want to go with just uh, one color in here? We'd like to do a two-color thing. Maybe something mm. darker on the bottom and lighter on the top. A little contrast. It's a, it is a pretty big room. Well, I have a few ideas that should make a big difference here. So we waste no time in clearing out the room. Okay. All right, just I got here. this. So what about the chandelier, guys? You going to keep this? No. Okay, there we go. It's free. Bye bye. And it's out of here. <laughs> now Ed and Jesse are considering a couple of colors for the walls. And an online paint visualizer allows us to test different color combinations. And what it allows you to do is to take a look at a room. This is a, a bedroom in this case. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, and then actually paint the walls and paint the accents so you wow. can see what the colors that you're considering might actually look like in a room. So right now, uh, the walls are all white. After experimenting with several colors, we settle on a specific shade of red for the bottom half of the walls, an off-white for the top half, and a light gold accent for the color of the chair rail and baseboards. With a decision on color, we begin cleaning the walls with warm water and detergent, an important step before any paint job. Next, we turn our attention to all the holes and cracks in the walls, giving me the opportunity to use one of my favorite tools. There comes a time in just about any painting job when you have to do some wall patching and repair. And here's a tool that's going to make that a whole lot easier. It's called a five-in-one tool. Now, I found at least six uses for this tool. Let me show you what they are. This edge right here is ideal for scraping out loose material and removing high spots like this. This point right here is used for cleaning out and widening cracks before you patch them. The long edge right here is also a putty knife. This hole right here serves as a nail puller. The side right here is ideal for opening paint cans. And the end has sort of a built-in hammer for closing them. And finally, this curved surface can be used to squeegee excess paint out of rollers before you rinse them. With all the holes and cracks spackled and sanded, we're ready to apply our primer coat after a quick lesson in loading the paintbrush. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to drag it over the rim like this. Well, that's what I always do. Because you see what happens? You've taken all the paint out of the bristles right now, so your brush is too dry. So instead, dip it in like this and just slap it on the side. Uh -huh. So you've, you've taken out the excess paint, but you've still got your brush fully awesome. loaded. Having graduated from Brush Loading 101, we start by painting the corners, the upper edge of the wall near the ceiling, and the edges around the door and window casings. We'll prime the baseboards too, since they will also be painted. What I like to do is to put my paint in a five gallon bucket and then hang a roller screen on the side like here. That's great. A couple reasons for this. You, uh, you can put enough paint in a bucket like this to practically do an entire room. You can actually load your roller a lot better on that screen. I always keep the bucket nearby. It saves a lot of steps when reloading and avoids dripping on the floor. It's best to roll the paint in long strokes from top to bottom. All right guys, there are your paint chips. Base color, top color, and the color of your chair rail. And the chair rail is going to separate those two, just like that. Now, they don't call this chair rail for nothing, 
because originally this was designed actually to keep the back of a chair from damaging the wall. So traditionally the chair rail is about at the height of the chair back. We first measure the height of the chair, then transfer that mark to the wall. Then I'm going to add about a half an inch because I want the top of the chair rail to be a little bit above this. So we'll go a half an inch for that. And then remember we're putting a new floor in the room down here. That's going to be about a half an inch thick. So another half an inch for that. And that puts the top of our chair rail right there at 37 inches, okay? Okay. Now we want to break our paint though kind of in the center of the rail, about right here. So let's make a mark about right there. That's where we want to break the two colors. We'll extend this mark across the wall using a laser level. I'm going to put the notch right here on the mark, okay? And then there's a built-in level right here. I'm going to keep moving this until I get the bubble right in the center. Once we're level, Jesse makes marks directly on the laser line, about every 12 inches. Go right into the corner and then go around the wall there. You see how this is designed to go right around the corner? Wow. And there's one more little mark out there. Mm -hmm. Now what we'll do is we'll take this, bring it over to this wall. And that's your starting mark. We repeat this process around the rest of the room until all four walls are marked with paint brake lines. Painters, dip your brushes. All right, this is our top color here, guys. I'm going to uh, strike a line down here where we drew our laser line. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're go it's going to be concealed behind the chair rail. Once again, we paint the edges and corners first. Then we'll cover the rest of the wall with the rollers. Now, there is a technique to rolling. After loading the roller, we unload it in one stroke from up near the ceiling down to the cut line. Okay. We'll go back up and back down like that, okay? Okay. Come back over, dip your roller in again, submerge it. I'm going to move over one roller width. You see I've left a strip there unpainted, the width of my roller. Now once I've unloaded this one, I'm going to connect these two now by rolling from one over to the other. Now what this does, it puts an even coat of paint on the wall. Right now, here's where this room is gonna really start coming to light. I almost need sunglasses with this color. I like it. Hey Ron, why do painters always wear white clothes? So you can see the spilled paint. Oh, I always wondered that. Well guys, I'd say we're finished for today. So uh, tomorrow we'll come back, put our chair rail on, put your new floor down here, and do some decorating. Really finish up this, uh, this room makeover. Nice. It's looking good. Yeah, eh? that really dried down, kind of really matte finish right now. I think it looks phenomenal. Since her husband, Ed, has to work, day two of our dining room makeover here in St. Augustine, Florida, is left to Jesse Gale and me. We start by painting the baseboard our third color, light gold. Once we're finished with the baseboard, we move outside to paint the chair rail, which we primed earlier. Painting the chair rail before it's put up saves the trouble of having to mask the wall later on. The laminate flooring that we'll be installing today will lie on top of this foam underlayment that will act both as a moisture barrier and a cushion. Now, when the floor is all down, it will expand and contract a little bit. So we're gonna use these spacers uh, to create about a quarter of an inch gap all the way around. Wanna grab the next plank? Each laminate plank has interlocking joints on the ends and on the sides, eliminating the need for any adhesive along the edges. When we reach the end of a row, we simply measure the distance and cut the last plank to size with a circular saw. Let's put this down. rather exhilarating. Yeah? yeah like In what that, way? I like that power. That's fun. <laughs> Jesse installs the final plank in the first row. Then, in order to stagger our joints, we start the second row using the cutoff piece from the first row. This time, we interlock the side joints together. This is the first board where we're going to have to interlock both the end of the plank and the long side right here. So for this, if you'll back up just a little bit, we're going to start again by engaging the long side. There you go. Slide it down to be a little bit. 
and then drop this down. Now this is interlocked. This joint right here, though, is still open. Okay. To close that up, we're going to use this tool. It's called a tapping block. There's a slot right here. That slot is going to slip over that tongue or tab right there. And then I'm going to take a hammer and drive this down. Watch that joint down there. It'll close up. When we get to the end of the row, the tapping block won't fit, so we switch to another tool called a pull bar. Good. Looks good. Okay. Looks Excellent. great. We continue expanding our floor across the room until we reach the door casing. Here we stack a piece of flooring on top of a piece of underlayment to create a depth guide and use an undercut saw to cut away the bottom of the casing so that the flooring can slide beneath it. Using some guidelines I've drawn to approximate the shape of the door casing, Jesse uses a jigsaw to cut the shape out. Okay. Good. We lock the plank into place, then slowly drive it beneath the casing by striking the opposite end of the entire row using the tapping block. Easy, easy, a little more, a little more, a little more. Good, right there, hold it. Okay. We're done. Excellent. Next, we apply construction adhesive to a T-shaped transition molding strip designed to cover the joint between the two different floors. We conceal the expansion gaps between the baseboards and the edge of the floor with strips of quarter round, which we attach with a pin nailer. Next, we move on to our chair rail, cutting 45 degree miters on both ends. Ah, uh, let's see if we've got a fit here, Jesse. Perfect on this end. How are you down there? I've got it in perfectly. Okay. We've already marked the stud locations, so Jesse and I fire a couple of finish nails into each one to secure the chair rail into place. Okay, turn it on. Ah, pretty. Oh, that looks nice. Wow, huh? So this is it. It looks excellent. You wouldn't know it was the same room, would you? I'm, well, look who's would... home from work. Hey there, guys. Oh. Look what we did while you were gone. Well, you know, you've had a beautiful. part in it, but you know, the, the detail work. What do you think? You like the floor? Beautiful, gorgeous. Did you think you were at the wrong house? I, I honestly do. Look, well, look at the light. That's and what about these colors? Huh? I'll tell you, you gotta what. Gotta love them. It's gonna be beautiful with the furniture and such. You know, I'm sure glad you came home when you did. <laughs> and then you just set it right up in. There you go. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, this furniture first. looks terrific. Isn't it lovely? It all comes from Ethan Allen, so it all matches beautifully, and I could not be more pleased than it just looks great in here. It's so super. this is a set. Exactly. Yeah. Very nice. We are happy. Wow. What a transformation, eh? Unbelievable. Is this Night really my day. house? I think so. You think so? Should we we should check? <laughs> it looks so good I can't believe it. I want to compliment you guys on your choice of colors. You know, uh, this is pretty bold, uh, but these really do work in here. The room is able to carry them well, and they look fabulous. Did you get enough saws? Well, I could still do a little more sign. I'm going to go out and get some now. I love the sign. I feel comfortable doing it, and I'm ready to take on the world with power tools. Did I marry the right woman, or did you I You did marry? well, Ed. You did really well. <laughs> well, I'm sure if Ed can keep Jesse supplied in power tools, there's no telling how many jobs like this one she'll complete. And having gone from a bland, unfinished dining room to this in only two days should provide more than enough inspiration. <laughs>